Hi, and welcome to the Changing Perspectives podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics, including grief, parenting, health and wellness, and relationships. Join us and explore a number of changing perspectives. We're your hosts, Jenny and Josh Brennan. Hi, Jenny. Hi. What's happening? Uh, nothing. How are you? I am good. You're in your phone, which well, is very apropos, <laughs> might I <laughs> add. True. For our topic today, yes. I realized that I have a new patient starting tomorrow morning, and I don't think that they did their new patient paper. Uh-oh. So, so you, so you don't know anything. Message them. Yeah. Um, that was, that's good of you as a therapist, so you're prepared. Oh, nope, they did it. Oh, there you go. I just couldn't find it on my mobile app. Very exciting stuff for our listeners. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 56. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the last episode, 55, we talked about um, cereal and teenagers and everything in between with regards to raising teens. So check out that episode. We need more cereal. Episode 55. Uh, we're back with you. Hopefully um, everybody's enjoying the fact that another Changing Perspectives episode is coming out so close to the last one. Mm -hmm. This is great. This is kind of like old us. We mm -hmm. love it. Uh, as we talked about last episode, we're going to try to get in the studio as much as we can. Um, over the next few months and hopefully we can have another 50 episodes this year in 2020 for you guys that's a good goal yeah okay hey don't forget the t-shirt photo contest tag us on facebook or instagram or the socials uh changing perspectives is not quite on tiktok yet but i do see, maybe see that in the future see i don't know how to do that yeah. but i mean i don't know what that would look like uh, me neither okay we got to figure that out we should consult with our teenagers also, I got to figure out if there's other podcasts using TikTok as a platform. Mm. Hmm. Anyway. Do you listen to Gary Vee at all? Um, I follow his socials. I don't listen to him. Do you watch his social videos? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He was talking about TikTok recently. Oh, was he? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't catch that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, go ahead and tag us on Facebook and Instagram with a picture of you listening to the show. Our screenshot of you listening, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a Changing Perspectives t-shirt. You can check out our Changing Perspectives merchandise on the website. We'll shout that out towards the end of the show. And don't forget, iTunes reviews are now featured over the air. We're going to read those on the show. i got a new one for you guys today. Please go ahead and, and give us a new review. Even if you've re reviewed us before, review, uh, review what, us again. What's that? Review. Okay. I'm stumbling over that word today. Review us again. And I guarantee that if um, you do a new review, I will read that one over the year. I'll give priority to the new ones. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, can we, before we jump into the show, can we, can we just talk about peanut butter whiskey real quick? Mm. Sounds gross. It really does. And I've been hearing about it for a while. So we, we had a date night last night. I yes. think we've actually been trying to have a little date night. Once, once a week. Once a week, at least once every other week. Even if it's out to lunch for half an hour mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and last night, yesterday was a, um, a sort of marathon day of basketball games. So yes, kind it of was. you left the house at 630 and you had to ref, you went to the gym and then had to rough it, ref a game. And I left at quarter of nine and we didn't come home until around six. Um, but we thought, I don't know, I guess we made reservations late, not thinking it was Valentine's Day weekend. And so our reservation. Well, I tried to get them at a certain time. And at like was, seven. Yeah. Yeah. But because it was Valentine's Day weekend, right. I think those were taken uh, at one of our favorite restaurants. So we had an eight o'clock reservation. And truth be told, we're just kind of old and boring and <laughs> start our night really early. And in fact, we so we went out to get a drink at sort of a local restaurant um, before our reservation. And we ran into um, sort of an. And our friend, one of our friend's parents, and I felt like that was more sort of our speed. Yeah, we, we would have liked to have gone out when they went out because they were on their <laughs> way home right, right. when we were just starting our night. Anyways, we were going to get a drink before our reservation, but they had a huge promotion for the new sort of peanut butter whiskey, and it sounded, it sounds gross. I've yeah. heard people talk about peanut butter whiskey; it sounds disgusting, but the cocktails they were making with it sounded amazing and it actually made us stay oh so God. that we could have like, like a dessert, a dessert. Drink. cause we said, well, let's have a drink here. We'll go get dinner and then we'll come back for like a nightcap, yeah. like an after dessert drink, which we don't usually get. Um, but then we were like, well, why don't we just cancel our reservation and stay here? So we did. And 
Oh my gosh. It oh my was God. unbelievable. So they had like this featured one. So the company that puts this whiskey out is called Screwball. Uh, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. I actually just pulled up their website. And so I think as a bar, when you... Um, you know, work with your distributor or whatever, and you accept, you say, yeah, we're going to, we're going to carry this. They, the company sends with the whiskey ideas for recipes. Sure. But I think, so this bar had their own version. I think the, their feature drink was their own version, which I didn't like as much. But one of the suggestions from Screwball, the company was, what was it called? Salted peanut butter pretzel or salted yeah, pretzel. Sneeze. You can sneeze. It's okay. It's just creme de cacao. Um, with the peanut butter whiskey and a salted rim, and it sounds simple. Dark, dark creme de creme. Dark, yeah. It was unbelievable. It's so good. It was so good. I just pulled up the website, and you're going to love this. So you click on drink recipes, and you just scroll down. There's a bunch of different options. They have a peanut butter old-fashioned. That sounds gross. I know. but it's a, So it's screwball whiskey, rye whiskey, four dashes of bitters, and a, and a cherry. So no, no, no muddling. No muddling. Hmm. Yeah, garnish with the orange peel and the Luxardo cherry, like like Challenge the real accepted. maraschino cherries. Have you ever seen the real maraschino? You have. Because I have because I've had real good yeah. old fashions. Yeah. But it, so you like the real ones that don't have like the dyes right, and right. the yeah. whatever. Um, they're excellent. So that's cool. Okay, great. That's not what we're talking about though today. Is that's it? not what we're talking about. We are about, talking about but, a relationship yes, topic today. But it reminded me of another super surprising cocktail I recently had that I was not expecting to oh, enjoy okay. this much. But we went out to Guy, one of Guy Fieri's restaurants in Boston, a new one, and they had it, their a tequila place, and they have they carry the Patron XO Cafe, which is the okay. coffee tequila, and they made an espresso, the guy made an espresso martini with this, and it was the best, one of the best cocktails I've ever had. Number one, absolutely, first off, the best espresso martini I've ever had. But absolutely one of the best cocktails I've ever had was this espresso martini with the Patron XO Cafe. Yeah, shout out to the bartenders there that night. We yeah, were away they were for, great. We were away for two nights for our anniversary at our favorite hotel in Cambridge, and so we took an Uber or Lyft over um, to that part of the city to try it out, but specifically because they have uh, trash can nachos, which we had at the oh, airport so in good. Mexico, in Cancun, and loved. Um and they took such Guy good Fieri's care of us. Guy a real deal. Yeah. Uh, they gave us free champagne because it was our um, anniversary. Mm -hmm. And then... Hooked us up with those martinis, I think, too. One of the drinks was... One of the other drinks was free, too. I think it was that one. I think he made them for us for free. He talked to, talked to me about a bunch of tequila that I would like. Yeah, it was... Shout out to them. We should tag yeah. them in this post, actually. Yeah, yeah. Because um, if you are in the Boston area, you tequila should Tequila Cochina. Mm -hmm. But go sit in the bar. By the garden. Yeah, sit at the bar. beautiful bar. bar. Great tequila selection. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. We got to go back there. Mm -hmm. And food was great too. Anyway, so this is connected. We're talking about, we're coming back at you guys with a relationship episode. Okay. Um, again, we really enjoy doing these and these seem to be pretty popular amongst our listeners. So hopefully okay. people enjoy this. But we're talking about technology and how technology affects couples. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there's. Um, I don't know. I didn't read the article. We talked about it last night. I got it pulled date up date, here. Actually. What's that? Oh, on our date night. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So this is from welldoing.org. We're going to put that in the show notes. Um, and the title of this article is How Technology Affects Our Relationships. So I'm going to go, we're going to come back to that article in a second. But I did pull up some other research. And we know, I mean, there's, I mean, you're on your phone right now. Yep. People are always on their phone. It's technology all over the place. Smart everything, smart TV, smartphone, smart tablets. It's everything's connected. We talk to Alexa on an hourly basis, I feel like, asking her what the weather is, what time it is, set an alarm, add it to my shopping list. Um, I mean, technology is just everywhere. And what's interesting for us, I think, Jenny, we are at this, we, we have an interesting history where we started out in high school in the 90s where. It was very minimal technology. I mean, AOL really didn't come into play until a little bit later, I feel like, in high school for us. So when you and uh, I started our relationship, no cell phones, right? no texting, very not even real e – like I didn't get email until later in my junior year of high school. Um, well, you didn't even – when 9-11 happened, you didn't even have a cell phone. You had a pager. No. I had a pager? You had a pager. 
I don't remember that. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah, because we couldn't be in contact. I no. had a cell phone because I needed one for work. Right. Because I was doing home visits, but you didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone. That, and you were, that was college. Like, I didn't even have a cell phone when we got married, I don't think. Really? I don't think so. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. But, um, like, right, when so we, we... we, the sort of beginnings we've of our seen, relationship didn't have the technology. The technology right. has grown as... We've, we've grown. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we started communicating via notes <laughs> in high school. Yeah. <laughs> passing notes to each other. I could probably still fold a note. You probably can. I right challenge now. you right now to right fold now. a note. While we're talking. Okay. Um, but I pulled up some some uh, research that I wanted to share. Just interesting stuff. Um, this is from You Reach Technology as a survey in 2011. People under 30 are four times more likely to respond to text messages than voicemails. Adults 30 and over are twice as likely. Uh, I am over 30 and I am four times as likely <laughs> to respond to a text message. Yes. And not, if you call me, I will most often email you or text you back. Yeah, I, voicemail is kind of, I mean, I think this is a little, I mean, this is from, at this point, nine years ago. That, so, this article? Oh, no, 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 the, the research I pulled up. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Let's see. The effectiveness of reaching someone via text is increasing. Um, Forbes in 2014 wrote, um, 91% of people sleep within an arm's reach of their mobile device. Uh, these days, I'm sure it's closer to 100 um, on average, American adults send and receive 32 texts per day, totaling 18 billion texts every day, 541 billion texts every month, and 6.5 trillion texts every year. This is up from 188 billion in 2010, and that's from a, a Pew Center uh, study in 2018. <laughs> um, Those numbers meant nothing to me. So what was it? What was the percentage growth? The so the numbers don't mean anything to me. 188 billion texts were sent in 2010. And it was what now? 6.5 trillion. Oh, that's a lot of math. I there. can't even do that math yeah. the, with that percentage increase. That's crazy. Smartphone users in the U.S. are sending and receiving five times as many texts and phone calls per day. That was in 2015. Again, from the Chicago Tribune, I bet you it's way higher now. That was uh, four years ago or five years ago. I have a present for you. You did it. I did it. I can't. I did. I fold these, or just, f- just give them to you. No, you definitely folded them. I might have had other people fold them for Probably. me. Probably. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, so that was some interesting stuff. I mean, clearly we've got um, technology sort of just becoming ubiquitous, and everything you know, running our day essentially. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, who has alarm clocks anymore? Right. I know. Right. Um, just as an example. Well, people that didn't grow up with technology, I bet. That's true. Right. I'm going to guess people over 45 are more likely to have an alarm clock still. A lot of our friends are over 45. I know. I I said that that. and I was like, I don't think that's true. (laughs) I don't think so. So maybe over 50? Maybe. Let us know. Do you use an alarm clock? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I wanted to share another, um, study from the pewresearch.org website this is from 2014 couples the internet the the internet what did i just say i have no idea the <laughs> couples the internet and social media how american couples use digital technology to manage life logistics and emotional intimacy within their relationships so now we're going to sort of switch gears and talk about technology with regards to having a relationship so the foundation here is technology has grown our our options for technology has grown yep. and our use of technology as a primary mode of communication has increased like a hundredfold. Right, right. Right. That's the basis there. That's sort of what that first study was getting at. And you have, we have such a, like at our fingertips at all times, we right. have like this connection to the world. Uh-huh. And I think that I, before I look at this pure uh, article, I wanted to, mentioned to you i think that for us i don't know it helps like spark conversation or um connection in a way like you and i are like last night we were hanging out at the bar on our date night looking at some of the stuff sort of preparing for today's episode um but also you know looking at different news articles having conversations about them having conversations Mm -hmm. about some of the things we're seeing so for us it's not 
you know, I don't think it's in any way a hindrance or, um, I don't, I don't, I, f- I don't, I feel like you and I don't do a lot of parallel phone using where we're not interacting. Mm, I disagree. When? All the time. You think so? Yeah. That's because I feel like we don't. Uh, although you're on call, what are there, 365 days a year? Mm-hmm. You're on call roughly 200 of those. Yes. 188 of those or so. Yep. Um, and so on those days, like last night, you had two phones with you and Mm -hmm. you had to be sort of coordinating like, Oh, someone called out and you're shifting people around and checking sort of referrals and stuff like that. Right. Right. So half of the time you really do have to be on your phone. And so we are sort of parallel on our phones and we can't involve each other in some of those. Like for you, you were just looking at the patients. Exactly. Like you've got all your work stuff through your phone. And so neither of us really have like a Monday through Friday, nine to five, clear beginning, no. clear end of our days. So our work bleeds into our personal life and it kind of has to, our personal lifetime. Right. And it kind of has to. So I think that there are lots of moments where we're both on our phone doing work. Um, or I feel like if people were to sort of follow us around and like go to our date nights or go yeah, I guess to our date nights or sit when we're at home together and sort of watch us, we would both be on our phones a lot. Yeah. And I think that, but I, I I guess my point was, I feel like we're not just not interacting. Yeah. We're not like mindlessly scrolling. Usually it's like, I'm going to check on the boys. It's sort of like when we, some of our date nights are kind of staff meetings, like, Hey, let's plan our vacation. Mm -hmm. Why don't you? No, we were doing that a little bit last night too. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't you look up this hotel and I'll look up this hotel or Hey, what I XL. No, that's the math homework. Our (laughs) oldest, um, XFL, X NFL, XFL, XFL. Uh, what is that? What are the oranges of that? What are the rules here? Um, and then you were looking that up on your phone. So, yeah, but we are interacting and talking to each other. So I guess we, but like I, like if you if you go on Facebook and you're scrolling through the news feed, like I'm looking at your phone, like I'm yeah. trying to interact with you, even though you know what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. we don't just do that. Like we don't sit there and play Candy Crush next to each other and not interact. Right. We don't do that. That's true. Um, and that that I feel like I don't want to lose. Yeah. You know. But um, this PewResearch.org um, mm-hmm. did a study. <laughs> you can do that every time. <laughs> I am. I don't you know, know why. <laughs> um, the overall impact of technology on long-term relationships. 10% of internet users who are married or partnered say that the internet has had a major impact on their relationship. 17% say that it has had a minor impact. Wait, f- I think I need to take notes. These numbers you're just throwing at me. Okay. Yeah. Do you have, do you have, I have nothing. a pen I have and no paper? Pen. There's yeah. paper. I need a pen. Oh, I've got paper over here. No, I need a pen. Oh. I'll just cut my finger and write in blood. <laughs> okay. That seems like I'll a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> I will take notes on my phone. Uh, I will use technology. I think that there's pens around us, though. I think they're not about. Because I had one Whatever. before. This is, anyway. not, this is not interesting. Uh, 74% of adult internet users who report that the internet had an impact on their marriage or partnership say the impact was positive. Wait, That's a lot. 74% of those who said it had an impact yeah. said it was positive? Positive. 20, huh. 20% said the impact was mostly negative and 4% said it was both good and bad. That's interesting. So this, Are you surprised by those stats? Yeah, a little bit. Here's 70, a caveat. That's positive. Seventy four percent. My the caveat I always put in when we're looking at data and research. Mm, this I like. What's the n here? What's the sample size? What's the number? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. What? How many people? How, what were the variables controlled for? When was this done? What questions were asked? How leading was it? How clean is this data? Um. So caveat there, but I think it still does give us something to talk about. Yeah. I would have guessed that more people would have said it was mostly negative. Yeah, I I would agree. That people say that's a lot. Positive. That's a lot. Well, I feel like just like how we start this off, I would say just in general, technology has had a positive impact on us. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this podcast without technology. So, I mean, it, well, and I guess like when we were in high school dating, we would pass notes in between classes because we weren't in the same yeah. grade. So, aside from band, we were never in class together. Do we have any classes together? I don't think so. No. I had some classes with some of the people in your class. Why? I think like French three I took with Heather. 
Oh, she listens. Yeah. I, had I took French four as an independent study. That was totally useful. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, nerd. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> we, can we talk about how nerdy we are that we went to our son's yes. high school academic night? I liked night. being back in school with you. So we, it was his. Well, we took band together. We were in that class together. Yeah. For four years. That's what I said. I said besides band, we were oh, in I'm class sorry. together. Um, we went to the academic sort of overview so we can learn about kind of how he selects classes. It was for just for parents. Yeah. It was at 630 in the high school auditorium. And I was like, we have to get there early because it's going to be crowded with a lot of parents who have questions. We need to get a good seat together. And so we got there like 20 minutes early. Both had our notepads with our pens. pens. And there were three other people there. Yeah. So we were like, <laughs> okay, this is a little weird, but we'll, let's go sit not in the way front. Let's sit in row four. Yeah. Center though. Right. Nobody sat in front of us. Nope. Everybody else sat in like the second half of yeah, the auditorium, like back. the back of the yeah. class. None of our friends came and sat with us. We were no. just the dorks at the front of the classroom, no. um, uh, writing inappropriate notes to each other during the performance. You it finished, was not a performance. You finished number one in high school and in college. I finished number six in high school and you had way high GPA average in college. I think mine was like three. Well and I'm a professor. So like let's all go to the front of the class and not be yeah. jerks to the professor. But, yeah. Um not that it was a professor. Anyways, um so thinking back to us being in high school, mm-hmm. we could communicate. We had class with each other every day. On the yeah. weekends we had like, you know, marching band on Friday nights and practices and all that stuff. But now as adults, if we didn't have technology we would just never ever communicate with each other unless it was via telephone. Yeah. Right. During the Mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And so technology does allow us to stay connected during the day, whether it's like sending a funny meme or asking a question or just saying, I love you. Yeah. um, Or saying, Hey, do you want to go out to dinner this weekend? So I guess it does uh, allow for more connection. Well, you really can sort of, um, I don't know, sort of run your relationship with your mobile device like we could make dinner reservations from an app or quickly make a phone call um i could text you on on the same device i make a phone call to get to make reservations Mm -hmm. for dinner or something like that um or see when the um you know when a certain restaurant opens for the night or whatever if they're open for lunch or brunch Mm -hmm. or whatever Mm -hmm. like from the same device same method you can sort of maintain your relationship you know um so that a and couple, you can share notes and grocery lists yeah, and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Like and um yeah, recipes for meals and mm-hmm. yeah. Um tech as a source of tension. So um some more in this Pew study. Twenty five percent of cell phone users cell phone owners in a marriage or a partnership have felt their spouse or partner was distracted by their cell phone when they were together. Only twenty five percent. That's that's surprising. Yeah. Eight percent of internet users in committed relationship have had an argument with their spouse or partner about the amount of time one of them was spending online. Only eight percent. Also surprising. Yeah. When is the study from? Twenty fourteen. Mm, that was six years. Six ago. years ago. Four percent of internet users in a committed relationship have gotten upset at something that they found out their spouse or partner was doing online. Yeah, that the more seems we're going low through too. This, I disagree with this study. I feel like I need to yeah. look it up and see. Interesting. Um, maybe their sample size was. Um, only people that are 90 years old and older. I have, um, I'm going to, we're going to share this. You know, we take everything with a grain of salt. We just, you know, share the, we cite our resources. Mm-hmm. We cite our sources. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll share this article with everybody. But um, <clears throat> there's just one more section of this. There's a lot more to this article, but I, this one more I wanted to share with everybody. Young adults more likely to report that technology has had an impact, good and bad. Uh, young adults are more likely to report feeling closer to their spouse or partner thanks to technology. 41% of 18 to 29-year-olds in a serious relationship have felt closer to their partner because of online or text message conversations. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Uh, That's kind of what I just said, too. Well, and in that same age, age group, uh, probably also bridging into probably upwards to like mid-30s, when you ask people... What's your story? I love asking people that even mm-hmm. when I'm not seeing them as a couple. Like, like tell that. me about what's your story with yeah. you and your partner? How'd you meet? Um, the vast majority in that age group now, there's a little bit of like a pause and a little shyness. And they're like, oh, we met online. 
Um, that's okay. Well, and that's, yeah. so I do a lot of sort of education around that, that that's sort of a lot of people's stories right now because we are so technologically focused. Of course, that's how you're going to meet. You know, how did people used to meet? Like at a bar. Um, but things are just different now. So for yeah. that age group, probably technology was the foundation of their relationship. They probably met on an app um, and then communicated via text or Snapchat or through the app itself yeah. for a period of time before they actually met. Um, right. And so technology for that group is central. Right. I feel like, I mean, for us texting each other has definitely replaced the notes, the note writing, yeah. but it's been like, it's continued. What's continued? Like being able to be intimate with each other with the written word. Like we, have really nice text conversations and send each other flirty things. And I think it's, it's nice to have that and that, that quick access to that, that platform yes. to be able to communicate in that way. Okay. Um, this next stats really, this is the last one I'll share from this study. This is interesting. I think it's probably higher now, um, six years later, but it says 23% of 18 to 29 year olds in a serious relationship report resolving an argument using digital tools, tools that they were having trouble resolving in person. Yes. That's interesting. Uh, I often actually think that that's a helpful way to engage with teens sometimes. Yes. I didn't, I didn't say that, I think, in the, the last episode so, no. or in the article. I think we talked about that before. Though. Um, but often, because, because if you think about raising teens right now, oh my gosh, they pretty much came out of the womb with cell phone capability, yeah. right? So that is how they primarily, that's their language. That's speaking their language. And I know yes. we talked about speaking their language a long time ago in one of our previous podcast episodes. Um, their language is texting. And so I know like me and our oldest um, often will resolve conflict in a major way electronically. Yeah. Uh, like there was an argument the other day, not an argument, just kind of grumpiness and, and attitude. And um, about an hour later during his break at school, I got a text saying, I'm really sorry for my attitude this morning. This is why I was acting this way. This is what I'll do to fix it. I love you. Happy Valentine's day. Um, because we weren't going to see each other for many, many hours. Yeah. But you know, between then and the morning and then when we were going to see each other at the end of the day. So, yeah. I can see adults probably do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I guess um, I'll piggyback on that. When I, again, we talked about this before, my day starts early, so I'm usually out of the house before the boys even wake up. So um, I, every every now, every now chance I get, I try to send them a text that says, good morning, have an awesome day. You know, and you don't, you, I normally wouldn't have a, a chance to do that. And sending a text that takes 10 seconds to write is um, a lot easier to fit in when I'm working, then picking up the phone and talking to them. You know, I think that there there's a spinoff to this topic, which is just the impact of technology on relationships in general. Yeah. Because, uh, like our oldest and I have streaks on Snapchat oh, right now. I still don't know what that means. I, well, it yeah, it just means that we each snap each other at least once a day. Snap is a picture. Uh huh. You take a picture and yeah. send it to somebody. And so then there's a little fire next to his name because we have a streak. We're like on fire. Oh. This means a lot to teenagers. And so like we had been streaking. You snap Woody? Our buddy Woody? No, I think it's because he's a friend. Oh. He shows up. I don't know. I'm I'm still a Snapchat newbie. There's nothing there. Um. Uh. What was I going to say? You just made me lose my Sorry. thought. Um. Shout out to Woody. Anyways, that... That is the, that's speaking his language and it means a lot to him. Yeah, I think um, because we had had streaks before and then I stopped doing it because I don't really use Snapchat and he kind of got, I think, offended and hurt. And so I think it means something yeah. to him that I snap that's him speaking their day. language. Mm -hmm. I have a reminder on my phone, though, to make sure I do it. That's very cute because um, it's not part of my daily routine yet. But uh, I have another friend who after some um, challenges in our relationship, we had a, a great conversation over a year ago now about how you know time and circumstances have kind of pulled us apart from each other but that we both still really care about each other and we fell into this uh groove of sending each other funny memes every day that's and that's awesome. kind of like our tap on the shoulder that like hey i love you i'm here even if i'm not seeing you even if we're not getting to talk about the real stuff a lot um i'm thinking of you and so technology in that way has brought us closer but we also could say technology has sort of blown up a whole lot of relationships too yeah 
So I think there's yeah, a spinoff I mean, in general absolutely. about relationships and technology. But thinking about romantic relationships and, mm-hmm. and partners, um, I think there's a lot of potential for it to bring you closer. Like yeah. last night, so we at at the restaurant, we're kind of we've said this before. We like to go and really sort of sit there for a few hours and take our time, kind of eating and just kind of being in the moment and sometimes there's sort of um logistical things we have to do like okay what's the plan this week when is the tournament how are you getting there who am i driving can the boys have a sleepover you know all that kind of stuff yeah um but then and then there's talking about real stuff and then we i think we're talking about the podcast and kind of came across this article no you had shared it with me earlier about like quizzes to take with your partner Mm -hmm. um and so we did some of them at the restaurant yeah it was fun. It was it was fun. So there, but we couldn't have done that without technology, really. No, I guess we could have gone to the library, gotten a book, brought the book in. <laughs> okay. Worried about spilling the Brussels sprouts on it. I was going to say, but but we wouldn't have been able to enjoy that excellent tortellini <laughs> that we had. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It was a very enjoyable date night, and I think it partly in part because of technology. But there are dangers to, te- to yes. technology as well, right? Well, and I think you, have you to can lose yourself and just find yourself in a relationship situation where you're both sitting on the couch scrolling through. Like parallel media. play, like mm-hmm. you're in preschool again, right. you know, just sitting next to each other, not interacting with each other. Right. Um, so this article, I want to switch gears and talk about the welldoing.org article written by somebody named Mandy Simons or Simmons who's a cognitive behavioral therapist. Um, if you don't know what CBT is, cognitive behavioral therapy, please check out, check out that, whatever episode, that episode we had. We had two. Two-parter. Um, yeah, so she wrote this article. I like it a lot. Um, we'll put the link in the show notes. Um, but it says how technology affects our relationships. Uh, it says recent studies have estimated we, we pick up our smartphones over 85 times a day and can be online around 25 hours per week. That's probably higher now. This was written a couple of years ago. Um, oh, it's funny. I just got an alert. Uh, now your iPhone tells you. Um, screen time? Uh-huh. I got yeah. mine this morning. Um, I'm not going to tell you publicly what it average although i'm online a lot for work because i do yeah. my documentation via sort of my documentation app um i'm texting and i was going to say calling clients but nope i'm texting and emailing clients yeah. texting and emailing students all day texting our children i don't oh and, and then sometimes if we're like watching something at night we don't have a tv in our room so we'll watch it on our phone so i averaged last week six hours a day yeah but it's not that's you just not like playing Candy Crush and I scrolling play, Facebook. I don't play any Candy Crush. Right. Well, um, I'm saying like a, a game. And really using Facebook lately, Facebook has become, well, if you follow our social media, you know I have not been act- active on Instagram. I've been sort of focusing on kind of getting, uh, I've been focusing on my practice a lot and getting sort of um, some systems in place uh, sort of logistically. Yeah. Um, like, like forms and, and paperwork and stuff, which I'm, I think I finished uh, awesome. what I set out to accomplish. Now you can push our episodes. I think so. Um, <laughs> and just 55. be more active and, and have it be useful. Um, so I'm not very active on Instagram at all. And lately I've only been using Facebook really as a research um, platform. Like we, yeah, were, we booked a vacation last week for later mm-hmm. this spring. We're looking to book a vacation, our family vacation for the year. And now we're thinking about a vacation for next year um, with, with some family members. And so Facebook is where I go for research. Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good point. Mm-hmm. For me, um, I have the two phones, the work phone and the other one, so I'd have to. I guess I'd have to combine the screen time because sometimes I'll use right. the work phone for personal stuff, mm-hmm. but not not as much as my personal phone. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I think again, it's tough to. It's interesting to see that data that the iPhone gives you, but you have to qualify it and say, what do I do on my phone? that's for work or for whatever Mm -hmm. you know to run the family or check the calendar or um send a text for the carpool group or whatever you know yeah or like check in on a friend whose mom is in the hospital or to right exactly just have a conversation like uh commiserate with a friend over sort of the stress of a wax museum project for our children i hope we get good grades on that (laughs) me too (laughs) um 
so uh, we did not do the work, but I just no, feel like no. when, when we have a big project like that at the elementary school level, involved. it's the parents. The parents are involved, are involved for yeah. sure. Um, sort of the project managers, right? That's a great way to look yeah. at it. <laughs> so why are we addicted to our phones? This is what Mandy Simon says here. The first thing to address when technology is impacting negatively into your relationships is why this is happening. The general range of feedback I receive includes, quote, it's my way of relaxing. Uh-huh. It's, it's how I switch off. It's my downtime. Or it's my chance in the day to keep in touch with my friends. So, the, you know, that I think a lot of people can relate to those reasons um Mm -hmm. but i guess it's about and she writes maybe people are turning to their screens to relax instead of seeking this comfort from their loved ones right or significant other which is interesting right um so there's some different sections in here some sort of suggestions on what to do um to use technology to an enhanced relationship ah, as well, okay. which is interesting. Um, let me just get to those areas. Can I can I guess? Yeah. How many suggestions are they? Are these are these like numbered? Um, no, there's like four four or five bullet points. I would say to um, improve communication or to connect. Yeah. Well, it says so. It says, what should we do about reliance on technology? And the first thing is really setting boundaries. Okay. So it, she says, families can put phones, iPads, tablets away when sitting down for a meal. And we do that. We do. We do. We and force them to do that. actually last night, so this also came out during our date night. Last night was really a staff meeting, I guess, mm-hmm. um, with peanut butter whiskey. Yes. Um, we allow alcohol at our staff meetings. Um, there was a good amount of like romance and flirting too. So yeah, no, it was a it, it was, was nice. a really nice day night. Yeah. Even though we were at a restaurant, but I don't really like to go. We hadn't date planned night. to be yeah. there, and yeah. we were very pleasantly surprised yeah, by the they had food, like a live good atmosphere. He and was there good. Was like two other people there. Yeah. Um. What was I saying? Uh, he he played a hard Beatles song and did a really nice job with it. Yes. Yeah. And he played Rush. He was really quite. Yeah. He played a lot of 90s music, actually. He did, yeah. Um, Okay, we're getting sidetracked here. What was I going to say? So we were Some of the most interesting moments of our podcast are when we get sidetracked. We were purchasing things on Amazon, which is also what, thank God, Amazon saves our life. Peapod. Amazon runs the world. Amazon, I know, I totally support small businesses. and, And listen, we we will go to a small business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and we don't support like um, chain restaurants really. It's very rare that you'll find us at a chain restaurant. Although the boys did go to Chick-fil-A yesterday. Please don't, don't send me your comments <laughs> um, or send me your comments. Just don't post them on p- pictures of my children. Yes. There. Um, <laughs> I will get to my point eventually. My brain keeps thinking it's Sunday and I don't really not functioning Listen, so one of the i don't things support we their politics on, but i support their chicken the boys really like their yeah, chicken and it's good. sentimental because we lived in colorado before yeah. sort of chick-fil-a was everywhere and so chick-fil-a is one of those places that reminds me of living in colorado yeah, which we love which we love and we i love wish colorado. you know if we didn't have family and and now friends that we love i might out be here, going back there later I, this year you might I have would, to, if i do go you have to come with me. i want to go on that trip yeah. with you um so one of the things that we put in our cart and i think i purchased um along with everything was a um sort of a card deck that you kind of leave on Mm. your kitchen table and it it's questions for teens um because we do have our phones put away but sometimes it can get a little stale there's like this very small window of opportunity you have to capture your kids attention and we don't have a lot of nights where we're all home at the same time because of practices and games and work um and so to be able to really kind of capture that and lean into it we decided to buy this little box for $25. I'll also put that on our website. Um, I'll put a link to it. Um, yeah. So it'll, it'll ask like interesting questions like, if you could be a superhero, what would you be and why? Or what was the funniest joke you've ever heard? I can't remember any of these. But yeah. Um, but so we used Amazon. That's a way that sort of Amazon mm-hmm. is going to help bring our family closer. Yeah. There was an opportunity for that to be purchased last night and it will be here tomorrow. Um, That's pretty awesome. Forget why I got sidetracked there. Do you remember? Well, putting our phones, tablets away. Away. Um, when you sit down for a meal. Because we do make we them do, do that. that. Yep. We say, nope, no phones. Put and them. And we took them out for a, a quick dinner Friday night, Valentine's mm-hmm. Day. Uh, and But we had to fight 
I had to fight with all three of you. I don't mean like argue fight, but like kind of like steal your phones because all three yeah. of you were trying to be in your phone. Yeah, it's tough for me because I was on call, but. Right. And then when they see you pick up the phone, they're in their phones. No, dad's but on we do, his phone. We do try. Yeah. It's easier when we're not out at a restaurant because we can say put them on the counter. Right, right. Um, okay. Yep. So limits, boundaries, things like <clears throat> um, maybe for couples, you know, don't don't be scrolling on your phone mindlessly when you're in bed. So that's literally the next one. Huh, Pretty good. Go. You and Mandy Simons are right, like that's therapist. right in sync. Mm-hmm. Uh, couples can leave phones in another room when they go to bed. That's not really possible. Uh, um, and you know, I would argue not really safe. Yeah, with kids and everything, and you want to be able to quickly. What if you need to call someone, yeah. or what if someone's trying to reach you? Right. I'm okay with phones being within arm's reach because if we go back to when we were in high school we people had phones in their bedroom they may not have been wireless phones or cell phones they still mm-hmm. recorded mm-hmm. phones but they were phones there for emergency purposes like it's it's okay we can yeah. have them there well i think that it's important to establish that though as not phone time right, right. so like right, you're right, right. in your bed but the phone is away from you like my as we all we've talked to multiple times in this episode i have two phones and one of the phones is usually always on the other side of the room, far away from me, uh, plugged in. Um, and it's I can get it quickly if I need to, but it's far away. The other one is usually in arm's reach. But we usually, if we do have a phone while we're hanging out in bed together, it's just usually your phone and we're just looking at Facebook together. We're doing something other, something else together. Um, but again, a lot, you know, we don't have a TV in our room, but we do watch TV. Usually it's on one of our phones. Um, and we'll do that in bed sometimes together. But it's I think it's important to establish that that time for you in your relationship that you're going to do something that doesn't involve your phone. Um, the next bullet point is actually says that it says certain times of the day can be allocated as phone free time, which okay. is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think that that is something that we could benefit from doing. I think it's easier to do that when you have a consistent schedule. Yeah. I feel like right now this season when uh, football season is one thing, right? Where there's practices every single day, but you're home at an early hour. Basketball season and your games are early, except for maybe one. Well, not in high school, but you have. So you have one evening game a week and you have like one game a week for basketball. You have like 32 games a week and 27 practices and they can be at eight o'clock at night or one of our kids doesn't get home from practice for lacrosse he doesn't get out until 9 30 at night yeah um so it's it's hard to find time where we could have sort of electronic free time right i think it's important to establish that though yeah but we could i also think though that that is part of why we like to travel the way we do yeah um is to allow us to sort of disconnect both as a couple and as a family. Yeah. Like we want to go to an all inclusive um, to kind of do nothing, to not be mm-hmm. on, um, to not be on phones because there's no real Wi-Fi and there's nothing that we need to be doing. Yeah. It's part of the reason we like Disney because you can't be really on your phones because you've got to be kind of going and moving. Right. Right. Well, you, 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 you really sort of have to lean into those moments where you do an activity that doesn't require any sort of smart device, like play a board game. Like we played Crazy Eights the other day right. with Jacob, which was a blast, a lot of fun. Um, but you can also lean into the technology part too. Like you, I think I had, I had Spotify going while we were playing, right? So that's that again. Yep, I was using my smartphone. And I was playing great jazz. Mm. Don't talk disparagingly about Miles. It was like 9.30 at night. I, we were all really tired okay. and you were playing very relaxing. Soothing, Can I just share with people? Jazz. Where's my Spotify? I'm going to pull up that playlist and share some of the titles. This was this was good stuff. Uh-huh. Yes. It's just not for a Friday night when we're playing Crazy <laughs> Eights. I agree. It's not bad music. It was bad. It was poorly thought out timing. But so we, I used, I was using my, my smartphone to enhance the interaction but we weren't like stuck on the phone right right? so you can use those technologies like sometimes you might have to um you might have to use your phone as a timer 
all right for right. or some for games are game on your something. phone like yeah. uh what that heads up is that where you like put the phone on your forehead and it everyone else has to sort of get you to guess what it is and for those of you that have watched friends you can actually get bamboozled the game the yeah. game that joey auditions yeah. for to be a host let's there's play a, bamboozled there's a bamboozled app and it's a fun game to it's play. so fun it's fun um so you can you can do with wicked like wango cards uh-huh, and everything uh-huh. um yeah <laughs> So if you haven't done that, that's a that's a good one to download. I think for free, actually. I, I think, think it is we, free. I don't yeah, think we paid for that. The Heads Up app, Ellen's Heads Up app, is a lot of fun too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so there's ways to use technology to um, connect with each other, and I yeah. think like when you're talking about it with kids or you're talking about it with your partner, I guess it, like most things in life, it's better to not come at it and say like, "I don't like this. Don't do that. Get off your phone." Yeah. But to say, "Hey, let's all get off our phones right now and do something else." Yeah. You know, offer a kind of solution. That was a really fun moment that night playing cards with Jacob. I think I had an, an, an espresso coffee. We were giggling, laughing, playing Crazy Eights, which is pretty much Uno. And we add different rules as you go along to, to make you pick up more cards. And we had, I had the Spotify going, listen, take the A Train by Duke Ellington. So What by Miles Davis, Straight No Chaser by Monk, um, Cantaloupe Island by Herbie Hancock. These are some classics. These were a lot of fun. I, I didn't say that they were bad. You Just were talking disparagingly about, about the, jazz. The, the your decision <laughs> to play those songs I in know. the middle of a game when I had said at like eight o'clock, I'm tired. I I'm want tired. To go to bed. It was putting you to sleep. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. But you like jazz though. Okay. So boundaries and limiting the time. Yes. What else? Um, this last one is don't remove your phone from your pocket or bag as soon as you arrive at your destination. So sort of in a social setting. Huh? What do you mean? It says like it's, it means basically don't take your phone out as soon as you get somewhere and look at it. My phone's always out. What do you mean? I don't have a pocket. Or where do you put your phone? Uh, you just have it on out, the table. And this is hard because we're parents. So yeah. I I always have my phone off. It doesn't like ding. So yeah, you're, you're kind of what? intense about that. You never like to have it. Because I think it's rude. Yeah, I it, get that. It bugs me when we're like out at a restaurant and your phone dings. Like a couple weeks ago, we were out on a date and your work phone Went dings off. and has strobe lights and yeah. alarms. <laughs> and it's like, don't forget about me. I'm yeah, here. Yeah. Um, and the couple next to us was like, whoa, that's intense. I know. And I wanted to say, no, my husband's just, well, yes. And also my husband's extremely rude um, and doesn't care. So I, yeah, you're right. I am sensitive yeah. about that. And I think about, that's nice of you to be considerate of other people. Yeah, it's about being yeah. considerate. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I always need to have it with me in case my kids need to get a hold of me. Yeah. Um, and so when they're not with me, I am more out to then I'll, then I'll put it in like in my wallet or under my wallet. Like when we went out to dinner with the boys on Friday night, I didn't have my phone out. It was just away. Oh, when they're, when they're with us. Yeah. But so I guess I equate this to like when you go to a party, show up at a a get together with other people, you know, refrain. Do people take their phones out? I think they feel like they do. They're like their first, you know, maybe there's a lull in the conversation or they're not sure where to go and they, their sort of instinct is just pull their phone out and start scrolling, yeah. right? Or even like, I don't know, like when you're waiting in line to order a, at a coffee shop or something, you'd grab your phone instead of maybe interact, maybe even interact oh, I'm not with somebody. That. I don't want to talk to strangers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm guilty of that too, but I think that there's something to be said for like when you ride an elevator with somebody or a group of people. I don't know. We're always so quick to just disconnect and not interact with the public around us. I think that's what this is saying. Don't remove don't remove your phone from, from your pocket or bag as soon as you arrive to a place. Okay. I don't know. I have to think about that. Yeah. I, I thinking about it sort of socially. I mean, well, think it, let's try to sort of keep it relationship wise. It is sort of a a source of conflict, hurt, frustration. I don't really know what the right word is. When we are traveling somewhere and I am driving. Mm -hmm. Um, which tends to be the case because you commute so much for work. So, and we lease both of our cars. So we make a conscious decision when we're going somewhere as a family to take my car because my work commute is shorter Less and it's my car. So I drive it. You like So often I'm driving and you're in the passenger seat Mm -hmm. and often you are just on your phone. Well, and 
uh, every other month I'm on call for work, so I have to be ready to answer a call. Yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about no. I'm saying another reason why you drive is because I need to usually. Oh right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, but you're like scrolling through Facebook and I feel like there's a way to connect me to that so, sort of separate issue. I feel like if you're in a passenger seat, it's your responsibility to entertain the driver <laughs> or navigate or provide right, right. music, but no, not I, just I hear to that. scroll through Facebook no, or I agree. Google or something like that. And I try to not do that. And you share that with me and I try to stop that. But why did I share that though? What are we talking about? I don't about? know. Hmm. Um, oh, taking your phone out when you get yeah. somewhere. So you, yeah. I feel like you do that. As soon as we get in the car and you're in the passenger seat, you yeah. and the boys, you're like, all right, time to go on social media and mom's got this. Right, right. Um, and also when we get home, that is the first thing you do. Yeah. Like when we get home, I understand I'm a bit like a tornado. We get home and I'm like, dogs have to go out and dishes have to be done. There's always something to be done. Yeah, I'm yeah. like a tornado. Let's do as much as I can right. in a, a short amount of time. And you come home and you take out your phones and you open them and you check social media and you check your email and then you put them back down. So often I walk around the corner and find you on your phone in the kitchen. So I guess right. in that way I can kind of see the benefit of like yeah. not taking your phone out, but also thinking about it in social situations. Um, I can think of lots of times where if we're out with friends or more so if we're at a friend's house with a group of people yeah, at some point in the night, there's a group of people who are on their phone. Yeah. And I did, they're, they're, like, they're connecting about it. Like, oh, did you see this event? I think the last sort of get together we were at is what came to mind when I read that bullet point. Because I remember like at one point was seeing... a birthday party? Yeah. 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 And then it became like, uh, like a song sort of thing. Like, it, I don't know, it became kind of... Yeah, then the, then the interactions were sparked by... Yes. The, the device. Uh-huh. Um, but at one, at some point it is sort of like, no, no one's talking to each other and everybody's on their phones. Yeah. Right. It, it is a crutch. So Mandy, Mandy Simon writes, of course, changing the behavior does not alter the underlying desire to reach for your phone every few minutes, but it does change the effect on the people around you. Ultimately, couples and families should find that they begin to value the time spent together and will all feel a little more present in each other's lives. I think that's what it's about being present. And if you... Use, there's a way to be present with technology. Yes, that's and my there's point. there's also a way to lose yourself and not be present with technology. Right, right. So really kind of finding that balance and, and being mindful about right. it and really kind of thoughtful about how you approach it is, I guess, I guess sort of what we're arriving at in terms of the, the thesis, the point of today's episode yeah. is that technology can be a great tool to utilize in your relationship with your partner, um, but it can also be um, a barrier. If yeah. you allow it to be. If you let it be. Mm -hmm. You can let it be something that enhances your relationship or if you you can let it be a barrier. Yeah. It's so kind maybe, of up to you. maybe think about what and have a conversation with your partner. Like what do you think the actual role of uh, technology has been in our relationship? And are there aspects of it that you think we should change or improve? Are there aspects of it that um, are bothersome to you? Yeah. Or aspects that you really appreciate? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. I, well, there's a lot more to that article. I'm going to share that in the show notes. So check that out, everybody. Do you have any final thoughts for us as we approach an hour? I do not. Excellent. This is fun. I like talking about technology yeah. and relationships. Thanks for dragging me in here Yeah. into the studio. Thanks for coming with me. I appreciate it. Well, everybody, we are going to be closing out this episode. I do want to share an iTunes review. This is from last April from username Agent Creamy. Um, it's entitled Important Discussions. Love the angle. The hosts are easy to listen to and provide valuable tips and ways to discuss difficult subjects. So thank you for that. Nice review. Um, if you want your review read over the air, please send us an iTunes review. Rate us and review us on iTunes and we'll read that for everyone to hear so you can interact with the show. Uh, send us an email too if you'd like. Um, you can send us an email, and if it's something that is interesting or we want to share with everybody, we can we might read that email over the air as well. Any final thoughts, Jenny? I have no final thoughts. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. For today's show notes links, you can check out pewresearch.org. 
couples the internet and social media, an article from a research study from 2014, and from welldoing.org, the article by Mandy Simons, How Technology Affects Our Relationships. Please follow us on Facebook, everybody, at Changing Perspectives Podcast and on Instagram at Changing Perspectives Blog. You can send us an email to changingpodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit our website by going to changingperspectivesblog.com. And while you're there, don't forget to visit the shop to check out all of that great Changing Perspectives merchandise. Go ahead and subscribe to the show so you'll never miss an episode. And we will see you next time. Say bye, Jenny. Bye, Jenny. Are you looking to level up in life with your health, mindset, and personal mission statement? Are you a coach of a sports team or leader of an organization looking to build critical leadership skills for your team? If so, then look no further than GetBurly.com. The GetBurly brand offers life coaching, personal fitness programming, and team building retreats, clinics, and seminars, all designed to empower individuals and teams to become the best versions of themselves. The Get Burly Team Building and Leadership Development Division works specifically with athletic teams, corporate groups, and educational institutions. Through their signature seminars, workshops, and or retreats, Get Burly will have your team firing on all cylinders and working as an inspired, cohesive unit committed to the mission and vision of your program or organization. Get Burly will build the inner strength necessary for you and your team to gain clarity around your mission input strategies to enhance mindfulness, amplify personal accountability and ownership, and much, much more. Do yourself and your team a favor and visit GetBurly.com. Get Burly. Be the best version of you. The Changing Perspectives podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Dizzy Bird Studios. Please visit Dizzy Bird Studios on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dizzy Bird Studios.